in the past few weeks, I've told, of course, my, my friends and family that I would be coming over here to give a talk. And one of the first questions that they had when I told them the title of my talk, which you can see behind me, A Flamingo Walks Into a Bar, they wanted to know the punchline to this joke. They wanted to know what the next line was. Well, guys, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Uh, which do you want to hear first? The bad news, I heard someone over there say it. So the bad news is that there is actually no punchline to this joke. Uh, the good news is that I usually tell really, really bad jokes. So you're actually spared my awkward attempt at, at a joke. Uh, but what I would like to do and what I'd like to start with is to share with you a story. So anybody who's been to Ireland, who's been to, been to Dublin, where, where I've been living for the past 13 years, is probably a bit familiar with James Joyce's novel, Ulysses. In this novel, the character Leopold Bloom uh, suggests that a good puzzle would be cross Dublin without passing a pub. Let's think about this for a second. Crossing through Dublin without passing a pub. So there's two ans answers to, to what's become quite a popular riddle now in Ireland. The, the first answer I'll share with you, which is the more recent answer, was suggested by a software developer within the past few years. Using kind of complex mathematical and mapping algorithms, he actually managed to find a path that goes through Dublin uh, that doesn't come anywhere as near as 35 meters within a pub. Now, why anybody would want to take this path through Dublin, I don't know. That's beyond me. Uh, and that brings me to the second answer to this riddle, which is the more popular answer, the one that more Irish people, of course, tend to like. And that is that there's no reason that you'd want to cross through Dublin without passing a pub. And that the kind of the answer to this riddle is that you don't, you don't uh, pass by a pub. You stop into one for a pint, or two, or three, or four. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the Irish pub has been sort of a mainstay of, of not only Dublin, but outside of Dublin into, into the rest of Ireland for hundreds of years before this riddle was posed in in the, in the novel uh, Ulysses. Uh, the Irish pub, who here has been to Ireland? Has anybody been to Ireland? A handful of you. It's a special place. It's a magical place, as anybody who's leaving one at one or two o'clock in the morning will tell you. It's a place where conversations happen. It's a place where, say, people might, might meet up after work, colleagues might meet, discuss how the day went. It's a place where friends will meet have a pint, catch up with each other's latest news. It's a place where business partners might meet, have a chat, discuss their latest venture. It's a really cool place. But what does all of this have to do with the theme of the conference? We're here today to talk, to learn about sustainability in science and society. And my contention is that it's through conversations, through sharing knowledge with each other, that we'll best achieve this awareness of the importance of sustainability. So, gonna, gonna share with you another story. This is me a few years back when I was doing PhD research. Uh, you can see me there taking a sample from uh, a less than respectable bit, we'll call it, of, of the flamingo there. And as I was going throughout my PhD research, and I know many of you might feel similarly, I was becoming increasingly aware of the fact that a lot of the research that's conducted within the walls of a university stays there. You do research, you might do field work, you do lab work, you do statistical analysis, all for the purpose of publishing in an academic journal or presenting at an academic conference. And I was, as I was going throughout my PhD, I was becoming increasingly frustrated with this. I felt like my research wasn't being shared in the ways that it should be with the rest of society. I had a few friends who felt similarly. We all felt that the work that we were doing on biodiversity, on the world's animals, plants, and microorganisms, was staying within the confines of the university. And we were very eager to find a way to share this knowledge with people in society, with the general public. Which brings me back to the Irish pub and the mainstay of the Irish pub and bars here as well, the beer mat. I was actually in a, a bar last night when I arrived in Germany and was a little bit embarrassed to notice that for every drink I had, they made a tick mark and then calculated my bill at the end. Thankfully, they don't do that in Ireland, uh, but they do use beer mats. I, I actually learned the other day that beer mats were first 
uh, manufactured in Germany in the 1880s by a company Friedrich Horn. Uh, back then there were cardboard beer mats. Uh, I think it was a decade or so later that, that beer mats started to be made from wood pulp and, and of course a variety of other, of other materials. Uh, but the beer mat, it's, it's an interesting thing because it's something that's in the pub, you're sitting there having a drink, you may or may not look at it, you might flip it over, you might have a read of it, but it's actually quite popular. Uh, there's, there's at, 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 its, at its height, uh, the, the uh, biggest beer mat producer was making 12 million of these a day. It's incredible. But what has this got to do with what I want to share with you? What's my story here today? So my friends and I, eager to share our knowledge, eager to share our awareness of biodiversity and its importance, thought, where's the best place to do this in Ireland? Where can we impact the most, the biggest number of people? And what we came up with was the pub and the beer mat. Historically, beer mats have been used for advertising, usually in the context of, of alcoholic beverages or beverage producers. But we thought is, isn't this the best place to reach a large number of people where people are there to have a conversation with each other anyway? when they want to have a chat, when they want to discuss something. And we thought, what better way to connect with people than with something they care about, the drink in their hand. We heard from the last talk, the video that we saw, that sustainability is not always something that's enjoyable for people, whether it was the light bulb that he mentioned or the toilet paper. It's not always something that people want to love, that people naturally love. And we felt the same way about sharing our research. We wanted to do it in a way that people would be interested in, that people could engage with. So our aim was to connect biodiversity and the research that we were doing to the drink that people were enjoying in the pub. So I'll share with you a few examples of, of the beer mats that we came up with. I'm holding, holding one with a flamingo on it here. Uh, the one that you can see behind me is a fact about cider. It says that it takes at least four bees to produce the apples to make your pint of cider. And then it goes on to give a fact about the monetary value of this per year. So one of our, one of our sort of main goals was to not be sort of preaching to people, not saying don't cut down trees, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. It's just share something interesting about the drink that people were enjoying. Uh, we also partnered with a drinks awareness company. This was in part because we received funding from college and they were a little bit suspicious of us uh, trying to, to promote drinking. So, so we worked with a drinks awareness company to, to have at least one side of the beer mat have a message about uh, alcohol awareness. So uh, another one was was on uh, the coral reefs. Ireland is actually home to coral reefs, which surprises a lot of people because people generally think that coral reefs are in the Bahamas or in Australia or in these warm tropical places. But, but this spear mat says that Australia and C the Caribbean aren't the only places with coral reefs. Ireland is home to 2,000 square kilometers of cold water corals, and that's equal to the size of two million of these beer mats placed next to each other, so that's massive. Uh, another drinks awareness message uh, about, about the, the tolerance of different wasps. And, and here's one that you guys might like here. It has a, a fun fact that, that relates to Germany, actually. So, so this one is saying that the unique chemistry of rivers helps salmon find their way when they migrate. These properties can also be good for beer making. Liffy water is good for stout. Of course, there's the Guinness from, from Dublin. And Rhine water is good for pilsners. Uh, this is this is one of my favorite ones, mostly because I like the look of this this elephant guy sitting at the at the bar. This one says that uh, elephants would need to consume up to 55 liters of beer in order to become tipsy. Uh, so there's there's an elephant looking like he has a lot of work ahead of him for for the night. Uh, the one the one that I've got here. And I'm a bit biased since my PhD research was on, on flamingos. I kind of lobbied for there to be at least one flamingo beer mat. And this one says, did you know that flamingos are born gray? Uh, they get their pink color from carotenoids, pigments found in many kinds of plants, including uh, the oranges, mangoes, and peaches used to make your mixers. So anybody who's in a pub that night having a, a vodka and orange juice gets a little bit of information about that drink. Uh, so, so what do I think we can do with this? What do I think the next step is for us with this, with this initiative that, that my friends and I started? And I should note that it was a group of, of eight of us that were working on this project. Uh, I really think that we need to look at our own research, whatever you're researching, whatever you're working on, whatever your passion is. Think about how you might connect what you're doing to somebody walking down the street. What will interest them? What will make an impact on them? And I think it's only through this 
sharing this knowledge throughout society, throughout the larger general public, that we can truly achieve a wider awareness of sustainability in society. So thank you very much. Thank you.